pull no punches. And the African-American and you brothers is rapping and talking crazy about black women, you need to stop too. You can't expect other races to respect your woman if you don't. Now, I cry loud and spare now. I ain't hold, I ain't let nobody off this morning. We on a rampage. Hard Street, real talk in the building. Mr. Sanders. Yes, sir. Uh, as you were speaking, before you spoke, you spoke the truth, and I can't uh, cute that. Uh, we call ourselves human beings, but we got people in this country mm -hmm. committing inhuman acts. So I can't call you a human. You know, we got animals that think better than some of you people, not you people, I don't want to use that. But when I worked downtown as a, a law officer, I never disrespected anyone. Uh, I, uh, I was also a union official and I would go to union meetings and I would talk about conduct and not call names, but I was, I, I was concerned about uh, the fact that we as police officers are supposed to be public servants and uh, public relation people. And uh, to, to think about how a police officer can go out and kill a person, you know, an uh, uh, innocent person. You know, you were not trained to do that. Well, maybe they were. Well, let me ask you this. Why not call names? I think we need to call names. Because when they shoot a bullet, the bullet get a name on it. When they choke somebody to death on camera, we know that name. We need to know the name of these police. And if you're a police and you're not policing the police, then what kind of police are you? If a police was to arrest me, they sure going to write my name down. How come a police is not arresting the police? Now, that's the question I got for all you members of the fraternal order. If you want real honor, if you want respect, when you see another member of that order committing a crime, you need to police your own brother first before you come and try to police me. And you need to write his name down. What? Just like you write my name down. One thing I, I, I thought about, you know, I saw some things inside of the police force that we need to have police officers to go through uh, a psychiatric evaluation every year because you're carrying a gun and it's a matter of whether you take your, vehicle, your gun out and shoot someone, you can take a life or you can allow someone to have their lives, you know, and we got police officers that got serious psychological problems. They're racist. We, they, they, they be racially profiled, and I walk patrol with them. And I saw what they did. I just didn't, I, I, I said to someone that it was up to me, it was up to me, you wouldn't have a job. You don't have the right to uh, uh, violate other people's rights, uh, civil rights, uh, 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 their congressional rights. You don't have that right. And if you are conducting yourself like that, you don't need to wear the badge. Well, well they, they, don't, right. they don't have the right, but they think they got the right. And I want to see, I won't, I won't respect I won't respect the FOP as an organization until I see some police arresting some police. If I don't see police, police, and police, you, I don't respect you. You're a farce.
You're a fraud. You, you don't believe in any oath you swore. You're a liar. You lie when you put the uniform on. You're a walking lie. You're a walking, talking lie with a badge and a gun. Face that in the mirror. Who are you really? What, uh, what, what agency do you really work for? And Eric Seifert said these white uh, KKK cops out here have lost their damn mind. They need to be held accountable and charged with murder when clearly that's what it is. Murder. You are absolutely right, Eric Seifert. It is murder. It is murder on camera under color of law. And the law should deal with murder as murder no matter who commits it. I am so tired of a square cell phone being described as a gun. And it ain't happened one time, again and again. I th- we not even allowed as black people to have anything in our hands no more that's not... We got to get white cell phones, and they'll probably think it was a white gun. I mean, I don't know what 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 kind of stuff this is, but uh, it's, something's got to change. I'm advocating all black men that don't have a felony conviction, get out here and get you a gun. Get a minute. I, they talking about gun control. I don't. I ain't supporting it. I ain't trusting. They take away the gun, and the only people that have them is the government. And you want me to you want me to support the idea of the only people having guns, the same police that's taking our life? No. I think every black man in America that has the legal right to get a gun ought to go get two of, them, three of, them, and be ready for whatever. Because until. There's only two things they're going to respect, and I say this to black people, if they lose their life or if they lose their money, them two things are the only thing they respect. And I'm, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, we're not going to lay down and just die uh, in, in, in submission. You know, you, you talking to somebody while they choking you. You talking to somebody while they shooting you. You talking to somebody while they tasing you, pummeling you and trying to maim you. I seen the guys, two and three guys on one guy who's trying to, who's trying to uh, 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 allow himself to be arrested and they literally break his legs with a baton on camera and, and somehow get justified and just like they went and got Bill Cosby, the prosecutor went and prosecuted Bill Cosby, but they ain't prosecute Matt Lauer. They ain't prosecute Kevin Spacey. They ain't prosecute Bill O'Reilly. They ain't prosecute David Letterman. They don't prosecute none of these old white dudes who doing the same thing and worse. They don't prosecute them. So the 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 ability of a prosecutor to be racist in his decision of who to prosecute is another problem. And then I seen another video where a white judge, a woman, was so mean and nasty to a black woman who had gotten some type of lightweight misdemeanor altercation with a family member, and she couldn't, wouldn't even allow the woman to speak in the courtroom, and the woman was suffering from emphysema, and she was trying to tell the judge that what, what she was dealing with, and the judge literally and rudely and in a nasty way as an old white woman to an old black woman talked to her like she was the dog. Talked to her like she was a piece of dog dung. Talked to, down to her, condescended to her, and was disrespectful to that woman. And that woman died two days later from the complications from this emphysema that she had, and she needed a treatment, and the, they kept her locked up, would not allow her to speak in front of the judge, and then the chief judge asked that judge, who was getting ready to retire anyway, to step down. Because they know that this is what this judge did. And Andre Smiley said, D- Donald Trump. I don't even know what to do with Donald Trump. Donald Trump is a reflection of America and the racist psychosis, the racist psychosis of America. If you you if you got issue with anything I'm saying, you can you can clap back, you can talk back, call 240-719-2560. I want to hear what you got to say. If you a Trump supporter, uh, you support these things that 
he is saying and doing and how he's conducted himself, you can call in the show. That's fine. 240-719-2560. The Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. Call on in to the show and let's have a conversation. Because we got to have dialogue. We have to have dialogues even with people we think they are fools. We got to have a conversation. We got to have open dialogue. I'm cool with that. I don't have a problem with that. If you want to defend the conduct of these officers on the street. And I know that the being an officer is not easy. There's a lot of officers that are due respect. I got officers in my family, good people in my family. Don't get it twisted. But to the extent the members of my family don't step up in a powerful way and make a public statement to say that you don't support this and then take have enough courage in the heat of the moment to check an officer from doing, because so often you see a bad officer getting out on somebody and the other officers who know better are standing right there and let it happen. I, I've seen it on too many videos where you see that two or three that stand to the back while another two or three is acting the fool. And what would happen to save any semblance of respect for the institution if those who consider themselves good would just demonstrate a little more courage. You, you, you are a coward to stand there and let somebody abuse another person like that. You are a coward to participate <coughs> in that. You are a cold coward. And I don't know how you face yourself in the mirror. I don't understand how you, I was a soldier myself. I was a soldier myself and I saw some things and I pulled people up. When I was in Haiti, I saw the abuse that was happening where soldiers were abusing uh, uh, Haitian citizens. I pulled them people up. You're not going to do that in front of me. You're not going to do that. And I know it's not easy, but we got to do it, Mr. Sanders. They got to, you, your fellow uh -uh. officers have got to step up and they want to save any respect for the instant, for, for the, their uh, profession, man. Uh, <clears throat> you know, people say that America is one of the greatest countries in the world. Mm -hmm. You know, it is. I don't, okay, but. America is not as great as it can be right. if we, as a people, come together and, 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 and show love, consideration, I know, that sounds respect. good, Mr. Sanders, but how, what, what do we, how do we do that? What, how do I'm we not, deal with when they, when they pulling this black woman clothes off her in public and slam her on the ground and literally threatening to break her arm over some plastic utensils in the Waffle House. Well, how do we how do we get love and respect? Because I'm going to tell you, I don't feel like no love and respect. I want to see his wife and his daughter treated like that. I want to have him watch his family. I don't feel no love and respect. I'm uh, starting to, I'm feeling rage. I'm feeling, who the hell do you think you are? I'm feeling these white people that I thought was my friends that I grew up with, and they stand by and don't say nothing, I'm starting to wonder, who are you? Who can, are you really? Can How I do you really feel? Because we can do an after-school special, we can sound warm and fuzzy, but it's literally black people dying, blood in the streets. That man came to that Waffle House and shot the first two black people on the outside and then went in and killed two more black people. And he was white and trotted off and, and, and they cut and they brought him back unscathed and then I see a black man with nothing in his hand ain't killed nobody and they gotta pick him up and dump him on his head they gotta pull out a baton and break his leg they gotta hit a man who can't sit down and, and with a taser and stun gun and have him fall and crack his skull on his on him. they ain't no I don't feel no love I'm I'm personally starting to feel a rage and an animus toward a uh, white people in authority and white people who are, are, are complicit and I'm I'm getting to the point of whose side are you on, white person? Can, and I don't care what your answer can, is. Just let me know. 
can I can I say something? You know, it, it took me many, 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 many years to uh, show love for those who are mistreating me. Mm. I I used to not be a person that if you if you mistreat me, I used to think, well, you know, mistreat that individual that's mistreating. But I can't do that anymore. I'm getting to be a old man. And I, 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 I turned it around. The people who uh, throw derogatory remarks to me and, and, and put stumbling blocks in my way, I don't practice that. Well, let me ask you this. You went to war with Vietnam. <coughs> were, we, were, we, were, we, were, we treat, were we showing them love when we was killing the Viet Cong? Well, when you... Uh, we was killing them. I mean, were we showing when, them love? We was bombing I'm, them and killing them. I'm an idealist. Okay, that's okay. what All right. I'm so, an, I, and are we uh, showing love to people of Muslim, uh, people who are Muslim in this country? Are, are we showing I'm, love to I'm, people in Iraq and Afghanistan? Or are we killing I'm, them? I'm speaking of what we should be doing. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Which we're not doing. I, I guess what I'm saying That's, because it, why is it always us that have to show the love? How come the police don't got to show no love? How come the police don't have to demonstrate any can, forbearance? Can, How come the police don't have to be more Christian? Can, you know. So you want me to be a Christian can, while you victimize can, me, but you can't be a Christian while you doing the victimizing. Can I, how, how does that make any sense? And can, people always want to encourage us to be at peace and don't react and don't respond. I literally, I, I, I'm going I'm to let you in here, but let me tell you, I, I seen, this is black people, this y'all problem. I'm in a barbershop. We watching a video of three white officers who literally shot a black man in a wheelchair to death in broad daylight in the middle of the street. Now, the man had no weapon. The man couldn't even get out the wheelchair. He was obviously having problems functioning and he's trying to comply with three officers with their guns drawn and they literally and summarily executed this man sitting in the middle of a street alone in a wheelchair and and all the man did was move his hand down to try to brace himself up a little bit and that was the trigger to kill him and I had a, a <coughs> brother who was a, 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 a barber actually say, well, he did He did kind of move his hand a certain way and try to justify the police officers killing this man because he moved a certain way. That required three men to open fire on a man in a wheelchair who is clearly disoriented. Now, this is a black man actually justifying this. And then when I said they need to be killed, I feel like all three of them, I'm ready to kill them. Let their families deal with the grief. I'm tired of having one uh, 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 funeral. Kill them. Well, you're a Christian. You shouldn't talk about killing. Well, it's more killing in the Bible than any book I ever seen. I can't think of a more violent book than the Bible. I can't think of one. So you want me to be pacifist while we being killed? I'm just like, listen, if you come... If they come to my house and to my family against my children, and I'm ready to meet force with force. I think we need to start taking them out too. We can't lay down. They was like, well, no, you're a Christian. Well, let me ask you this. If you're a Christian on a battlefield in war, do you go around calling Jesus' name or do you go shoot? If you're a Christian who's a police officer and you confronted with somebody you believe to be a criminal, do you call Jesus or do you shoot back? So now if I, as a black police officer or a black soldier, can have authority to kill when I'm confronted by evil, why, as a black citizen, do I not have the same authority and a black Christian to, to kill when I'm being confronted by evil? Why do I now need to be the pacifist and let the person who's supposed to be uh, the one who is 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 uh, 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 representing justice kill me and I now got to be Christian. David was a warrior. I said, listen, David killed so many people. Read your Bible. I got him a box. I rise in it. David used to string foreskins on a string. 
He will kill you, cut off the foreskin of your penis, put it on a string, and carry it around on it. And he was a man after God's own heart. So don't tell me I got to be a pacifist when I'm faced with demons, when I'm faced with evil, when I'm faced with racism in the name. That's why a lot of these young brothers don't want to go to church now. They'd rather burn the nation because at least the nation going to tell you to stand up and be a man and defend your wife and defend your daughters and defend your community against evil, no matter how it presents itself. Even in a blue uniform, we got to be prepared to do it. And well, you shouldn't do that. Well, what did this whole country do against the tyranny of King George? How did America get born? This whole nation was born when people who were the rightful subjects of the king said the king is dead wrong and now the king's soldiers got to die. And you can't come up in my house, you red coats. You can't. That's what that's the whole. There's nothing more American than standing up against uh, tyranny of authority. That is the how this entire nation was born. And I say black men, get your gun. Black Christian men, get your gun. Black Muslim men, get your gun and be ready and be ready to stand against evil no matter how it comes against you. Because if we go laying down and going to the church and, and hanging our heads, why, they don't have no mercy. They didn't have mercy for 400 years. We wasn't fighting back. And they was hanging our women from trees and killing them and cutting babies out of them. They didn't have mercy then. Why would we expect them to have mercy now? We watching them on video killing us with people saying, I can't breathe, and they still keep choking you to death. And you hear people saying, I'm not resisting, and you still see them getting tased and shot to death on camera. And now you want to talk, you want to try, just because I have faith and Christ is my savior, I'm going to be a punk and let you come and kill me? No. No. Get your guns, get ready, get your guns, and get your wallets, and fight back, fight back, Fight back, period. Can I, can I make a comment? Uh, I was watching a documentary and in Africa, the soldiers were killing people. The water was contaminated and the people that were drinking the water, they were getting bad off sick and dying. But when the people came together in unity, and they prayed, that's when the water cleared up. And the people that they, the soldiers were going to kill, they turned and walked away. The, the, the key is, even when it come down, I pray for my enemies, even. You know, it may be a bad thing for some people to uh, think, about me praying for my enemies, that I pray that God, our creator, take my head off, will turn our enemies' hearts around so that they will do our Heavenly Father's will. It's not easy. For years it has not been easy for me to do that. Mm. But I pray for all men, no matter what race, creed, color, national origin, sex, or religion. People ask me, are you a minister? I tell them I'm a spiritual-minded man. Mm -hmm. I'm an Indian. That's what I am. But I love all people, whether they love me or not, whether they try to trip me up or not, put well, stumbling blocks in my way. Well, I feel you. I, I appreciate your heart. Uh... I believe in praying for people. I believe in prayer, but I, if I can't pray for you, I'm going to pray over you. I'm going to pray over your dead body in my front, in my living room. That's what I want to do. If I can, and I, I'm willing to pray for you. That will be fantastic. If you change your heart and turn around as I'm being a brother to you and you a brother to me and we all can reconcile and hold hands and sing Kumbaya, great. I'll pray for you. But if you, if I can't pray for you, I'll ask God to help me as I pray over you. If I put this 
hot lead in you <laughs> and, and dispatch you and the demon that rode in here on your back. <laughs> That's what you need to start seeing because we getting killed while we praising God in our churches. They, the devil is so bold now that he coming up in the church and murdering us while we while we pray. Yeah. While we pray. I so understand. I, I, if I have a church, I'm telling you, come up in the church uh, shooting, they're going to come out shooting back. You're going to come to the church, we shoot you right there and then have your funeral. You're already in church. Yeah. And since they're moving your body out. We just <laughs> come up in a black church shooting, kill him on the spot and pull it and keep some coffins in the basement. <laughs> keep some coffins in the basement, Mr. Sam. <laughs> and when they come in here shooting, trying to kill black people when they praise God, kill them on the spot, lay them in the coffin <coughs> and call their family <coughs> and tell them, look at them. <coughs> and, and, and then, they'll, you know, we save you some money. But enough is enough now. I'm yeah. tired. I'm yeah. tired. And this is just real talk. I try to tell y'all, Hall Street Journal, we're here to educate, edify, enlighten, and entertain. But I got to be honest, man. I got to be honest. You right. Uh, the prophet said we need to continue to pray against demons of destruction in the name of Jesus. Plead the blood of Jesus, Jesus against these demons. Amen. I'm with you. I am with you on that. We absolutely must be prayer warriors. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. I, I, I understand. I understand that the greater, the, and you're right, Mr. Sanders, the greater battle is in the spiritual realm. But I'm going to deal with the physical realm shrewdly as well. Can, can I so, say? You know, so that's all I'm saying. I'm, can, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired. Can I tell you uh, what a mortician told me? What is that? A mortician told me a few years ago when I was in the Harbor Hotel. And he and I was into a conversation and he said, you know, I'm a mortician. He said, I had to fix a young man up. Uh, he had gotten killed by some guys who, I guess, dealt with drugs. And they killed him. And while he was in the uh, coffin, laid out, laid out in the coffin, they came back in and shot him five more times. He said, I had to go fix that young man up again. Now that is really sad. I've gotten to the point where nothing surprised me. Anything that happened in this world, I'm not surprised. I just ask God to grant us peace, joy, happiness, and help us because we need help as a society to come together. But I know that it's not going to happen. I'm an idealist and I speak idealistically. And I appreciate that. And I appreciate the spirit. I, I mean, I respect the spirit of peace, uh, even when I'm in turmoil inside. But sometimes I just had to, I just had to express my frustration this morning. I, I'm, I'm just tired. But, you know, we, we, we press toward the mark of the high calling. I'm not there. I tell people all the time, I'm a Christian. I'm not Christ. You might catch me on a bad day, Okay. And, and, and so I'm, I'm pressing toward the mark. I ain't there yet. I'm not there yet. And clearly these people who are killing our people and disrespecting and killing the Bless women of, and hurting us like this and mistreating us like this, um, they're not there yet either. So we all try to get where you are, one, Mr. Sanders. One more thing. I appreciate thing. the sentiment. One more and thing. You can have the last word. Okay. Those individuals... I'm challenging you who are in the decision-making positions to come together, you ministers of these different denominations of churches, to come together and do something rather than just go to church on Sunday uh, and go to Bible study. Uh, we got that topic next week. We're going to talk about the, the position of the church in the community. The community is not a resource for the church. The church is a resource for the community. Real talk. 
We out of here. Peace. Uh, peace. Y'all take care and be blessed. And you looking sharp, Mr. Sam.